surprise video. If you've been following me for a while, then you know that I usually post videos every Sunday. But today, I decided to make an exception because today is the release date for... The Dictionary People by Sarah Ogilvie, which means that this book about the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary is now available to buy. So run, don't walk to your nearest bookstore. So Vintage Books sent me this book in exchange for an honest review, and I can honestly say that this advanced reader's copy is the happiest that any advanced reader's copy has ever made me because it's just the perfect book at the perfect time. So not only is it, well, the Oxford English Dictionary and I'm in Oxford right now, a lot of the things that happen because one of the key editors, the longest running editors actually lived in Oxford, well, they happen in Oxford and they revolve around Oxford and institutions. But even if you're not in Oxford, I think that if you're a fan of words, if you're a fan of dictionaries, if you're a fan of reading, and if you're a fan of history, and if you're a fan of history about people specifically, and if you're just a fan of reading stories about people, then I think that this is the book for you. Anyone who finds a passion in reading about obscure and overlooked characters will find something in this one. So in case you don't know, and this is the perfect chance to find out, the Oxford English Dictionary was actually one of the first dictionaries of its kind to not only just dictate how words should be used or what the meanings are, but to actually put them into context to show the history history of the word, to show where the word appeared. The goal was not so much as to dictate the rules of language or what something means, but to show, essentially, <laughs> to show how a language is used, how a language develops, to describe a language, to paint a picture. It is also something that, due to the extremely comprehensive nature of the project, I mean, you can imagine what a feat and of a task it is to take every word that is used in the English language, that includes every word that I'm using in this video right now, and to put it into a single work. I mean, it's not a project for a year or for two years or even for ten years. It's a project for a lifetime, and these people who are listed in this book, they devoted their lives to this project entirely. And it's associated that because of what this project is like, that it's all about elite scholars and institutions like Oxford or other powerhouses of academia. It seems like it's a project that is only undertaken by academics that we, <laughs> mere the mere peasant public, could never really understand because, I mean, odds are, if you're watching this video right now, the majority of you probably has never worked in dictionary work, and neither have I, and we can only imagine the effort that it takes to take every word ever written and not only define it, but to trace back the etymology and then find the context where it was used and give examples and find synonyms. So it seems that this was an exclusive work but this couldn't be further from reality. The dictionary relied on contributions from the public, so it's not only about Victorian men, although of course old, rich, white Victorian men are included, it's also about astronomers and inventors and drug addicts and murderers and explorers and cannibals and Europeans and women. I mean, it's not a purely British man project. It, it was truly a project by everyone. Every chapter in this novel, in alphabetical order, which I will open for you right here, is devoted to millions and millions of life. Look at all these chapters. Every single one is devoted to thousands and thousands of lives. Without who, this work would have not been possible. It's an extraordinary project. I mean, it's a collaboration through space and time, across borders, across cultural differences. It's a testament to the will of humanity and how far we could come if we put our collected efforts together. It's, it's a testament to just how passionate we feel about language and about how many people from all sorts of different corners and different backgrounds read about the project and decided, yes, I want to be a part of history even if my name is just a brief mention in the footnote. And the amazing thing is that the author takes all these names in the footnotes and she turns them into stories for us to read. Years later, we get to hear about 
a woman who was commi- who was committed to an asylum because she was considered to be overeducated because she contributed to the dictionary and didn't want to marry the guy her parents wanted to marry. And we can get to hear her otherwise untold story it, within these 300 or within these 400 or so pages. It just shows how much humans can achieve when we're passionate about something, when we're excited about something. And of course, it's... And it was an imperfect project, and the author really shines light on some of these difficulties and how Murray wasn't always an incredible person as the longest-running editor, and he didn't always pay people, or he tried to get rid of them. But although it's an imperfect story, it's so is life. It's a story about life itself. It's a story we would have never heard of, or rather only heard the official version, <laughs> the one that you can get through a quick Wikipedia search or a Google inquiry that tells you about the names of the people who were the editors, or how many slips there were, or the dates of a certain submission. But instead, we get to hear a real story, that alexog- that alexicographer, sorry, this word is hard to pronounce, and also the author's surname, which is not great. I'm very sorry. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. As you actually see if you read the book, and that's not a me problem, turns out that's an English problem because of how rich English, like the background for English words was. There isn't really like a consistent way to read. And there was even an attempt at glossal type where people try to simplify spelling and spell bread without A like bread and leather without A like leather. But okay, I'm getting off topic. So the lexicographer uh, went into the archives and she found a black notebook tied with cream ribbon that had notes on the contributors and she turned it into the book that I'm holding up before you now. Very close to the camera because my new dorm is not great for filming. How many of you can name a contributor to this dictionary that's not one of the main people? (laughs) Odds are you can't, neither could I. But now I can not only name a name, but I can tell you about their personal quirks, their personal habits, their family lives. Things I would have never otherwise known. And I can already anticipate that some readers will say that this is not for me because it's more about the lives of people rather than the creation of the dictionary. And I mean, that's true, but let me assure you there's still a lot of information on the slips and on the system used to collect these slips. Uh, Slips were basically like basically rectangles of paper with the words written on them and they had different every contributor had instructions from Murray, the longest reigning editor, of what he wanted. So like, look for these words, and then when you type them up, write the word, write the etymology, write the context, write your initials, things like that. And there's all of this information about the actual compilation. But for me, although that was purely, although that was absolutely fascinating, it was not as fascinating as the lives of the people who actually helped contribute. There are the most random anecdotes that make you laugh or make you feel sad or make you pull a face of disgust. These are real people with real quirks and you you will never meet these people and you have never met them but you're just so interested in their lives. I mean the author really makes them come alive in just like every chapter is not so long and in just a few pages I am suddenly interested in a kleptomaniac who steals books just because he wants to steal books but otherwise he really cares about the dictionary and really works on it with all his power. In just a few pages I care about Karl Marx's daughter who never really contributed much to the dictionary and was considered hopeless but then went on to be an amazing and incredible translator. <laughs> it's a non-fiction book, but it's almost written like fiction. And at times you become so engrossed in their lives that you forget that you're actually actively like discovering the history of the dictionary and learning things. And you guys know that on this channel, I mainly review fiction and I personally always struggle with non-fiction. Not, not that I like can't read it or anything, but I just prefer fiction because non-fiction is is often boring, it's often written in dry prose. Well, this is my solution to that, because you get to read about history and things you enjoy and learn new things for linguists and word nerds and 
let's just be honest, general nerds like me, but, but then you also actually get to enjoy the process because the prose is very easy to read and it's lovely. It's like you're reading a story and, and learning things in the process. The level of research done here is astronomical because there's a level of scorn here that I can sense that people are going to say, well, if it's a nonfiction book and it's like about the lives of the people, is there really that much research? Yes, <laughs> because to tell me not only about their family status, but to tell me personal anecdotes, like that the longest reigning editor, Murray, that he really liked active and fit life and riding bicycles and that he rode through Oxford and he couldn't really properly break. So his ways of turning was to just crash and to fall. And that once he went out with his friend and they went went out into nature to observe the nature and they also spoke in regional accents the entire time and they tried to ride a bike in tandem and then they got back home and they were both very angry at each other because they said that the that they were doing the work riding the riding this bicycle and it turns out that they were riding the entire time with their ba brake on. I mean this is an insane level of detail. To so tell me that Ellis a person who acted as a key connector, bringing a lot of influential people for the dictionary, helping to contribute with finding people who could fund and who could really contribute to the project, to tell me that this man had a coat with 28 pockets in which he sometimes carried snacks just because he thought that his friend might be hungry is something that only a close friend of Ellis would know. And yet, and yet, we're presented this information here. This book is for people like me who care about people that they have never met, who read to live lives that they have never lived. And that might not be your thing because it might not be the thing that you're expecting from a nonfiction book. But I think it's worth giving it a chance because you might find that you really enjoy being engrossed into the lives of other people. I particularly like that there isn't just detail about the people but about the author's personal takes, about her own personal thoughts and what she found interesting, and the fact that every chapter starts with a different letter. I mean, it's the small details that make this work special. The entire time, I found myself flying through the chapters. I mean, it may feel a bit like you are jumping too quickly from topic to topic. Perhaps the connections could have been made smoother and not everything fits neat neatly into one category, which is of course to be expected. So do expect that within one chapter, you might you don't just get one life, but you get many, many, many that are not always connected in obvious ways. And it's, it's a bit of a headache sometimes, I'm going to be honest. But in general, I thought like, because the writing was so cohesive and the idea about exploring the lives of all these people was so cohesive, it made the experience interesting. <laughs> the transitions between the chapters were in general very well linked. Like, to be honest, <laughs> it's not so much the links between the chapters that were the problem, it would links between the people within the chapters. But in general, between the chapters, you could almost, if not for the letterhead, you could almost just read on. I love that the subject matter is so original, it's something that hasn't been done. But what I love most is, and this is going to sound so cheesy, but I love when people are passionate about what they do, because I think you can really tell, like it just shines and it just radiates. and. I just think that the dictionary people has that. It has that shine and it almost makes me like overlook all the flaws because of how passionate the author is. Like, you know, there's just people that come along and they care about something so much that they fill everyone in the room with this energy because they care about something so much. I think that's beautiful. I think that this book wouldn't have been what it was if the lexicographer didn't care this much about the project. I mean, <laughs> her passion is contagious. I became passionate about this project. I was never like someone who was like, oh my god, the Oxford English Dictionary, I need to have hard copies on every shelf. No, I just care about words and I care about books and frankly, I care about drama in other people's lives. <laughs> but this, it's just, it's honestly, it's contagious. And I also think it generally speaks to the quality of the work that it makes you care so much about something, even if you're not necessarily as passionate 
uh, about it as the author. It's a new type of history, it's not a type of history they usually tell, and I'm here for this type of history, because no one will tell you that one of the most prolific contributors of the dictionary was driven into an asylum by overworking. But Sarah Ogilvy does. She quite literally lifts the curtain and throws the project into the light from a relative obscurity. And like I said, she shines also the light onto problems that I would have never known about. Financial problems, how poor Murray had to live on 900 pounds a year in, well, in modern currency, currency if we translate that. And he also had to use that money for funding the dictionary as well. I mean, between abandoning the project and choosing himself, he chose the project. He chose something larger than life. There were also social and political issues, like how people didn't want the word condom to be published, or talk about swear words because they didn't think they thought that it was obscene and it was literally against the law. Don't get me wrong, it never undermines the work of the editors, who of course had one of the most important jobs in actually categorizing and putting the finished OED together. It just highlights that all the people who, well, were just given a footnote were actually so much more than a footnote. People gave their lives to the project. It highlights the importance of these contributors, these people, because without the contributors, the dictionary would not have been possible. And the words the contributors sent in, they're a whole other level of fascination. Did you know that pharmacy was originally used for witchcraft? to refer to potions in witchcraft, and the man who submitted it is also the man who specialized in regional accents. Where are you going to use the word absquatulate, similar to abscond? So many linguistic oddities and curiosities to be found. These are words that form our language, and so reading the history of our language is like reading the history of us too. As much as I admire this book though, there were of course its flaws too, which prompted me to give an, a final rating of 4 stars. Occasionally the book lacks focus, and that is to be expected given the scope of the project so i am not too harsh about it but if you are a reader who wants something in a more linear straightforward type of way i i think that this might not be the book for you in general i enjoy jumping from topic to topic i felt like it was done in a cohesive way and also if you can't tell by my style of videos i do have a tendency to go off on a tangent sometimes too because i find something that interests me and i go and i talk about that it does however at some point possibly by the end of the book get to be a little bit too much especially if you're looking to read this book in kind of like one sitting mm -mm. it's not a book that you can take on a plane it's the type of book that you can read one chapter a day or one chapter between every meal things like that because this book has a lot of information dumps. And it's nonfiction, which is normal. Nonfiction books tend to throw information at you. But in particular with this one, I'm terrible at names. I am terrible, 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 terrible at names. But I'm very good at remembering personal anecdotes. And so I enjoyed having personal anecdote after anecdote thrown at me. But in about a week's time, if you ask me person perfectly to align every anecdote to the name. I can probably not do that, but I can tell you all the anecdotes. I just won't be able to perfectly name every name because there were hundreds, if not thousands, throughout this entire book. And because of this, it also seems like I never really got to hear about everyone in the same amount of detail or to the same extent. And that's normal, that's to be expected. But it also left me feeling a bit sad <laughs> and disappointed. <laughs> Which I realize is extremely unreasonable, but this is an honest review, and I am honest. I was a little bit disappointed that there were so many people mentioned who never got a mention here, or that people were not really referred to to the same extent, and I understand that this is due to the history available on each person, and also, well, practical reasons of time and space, if you don't, if you don't want this book uh, oh, by the way, I ran out of highlights somewhere here, so I have pencil marks instead. Um, but if you don't want this book to look like this, and if you want this book to look like this, and you don't want it to look like this instead, that makes sense, of course. But also, I felt like if maybe there were several installments to this, and each one had its own theme, like women, or I don't know, men, or uh, the rich, or the poor, I don't know, just any other theme, maybe this could have been avoided, because it just felt a bit like everyone everywhere all at once but also 
lives, history, lives are messy, people are messy. I didn't mind that too much. So I feel like if it did have a narrow focus, it would lose some of its charm. Again, this is just a personal preference. And possibly, of course, by the 26th letter of the alphabet, it started to be a bit too much. Not in terms of not only in terms of the information, which I mean was from the very beginning hard, but in terms of like it started to get a little bit repetitive to be jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping nonstop. If you really want to remember and really want to engage with particular people, I advise you to do what Murphy did and keep extensive tabs. If you will, write out the names of the contributors in your own little notebook. But personally, I would do it differently. I would highlight the anecdotes and little stories that you like about people and make notes as to who they were and then in the end compile them. And you'll find a lot of entertaining stories that you would have not otherwise heard. And you'll also find that in the process you discovered more about the dictionary and learned something. So all in all, I hope my review was helpful and comprehensive. And yeah, that's it for my review. Honestly, I could talk a lot more, of course, about the actual dictionary and the words and the content. But what's the point if you can go and read this book yourself? So I just want to reiterate that this was completely my personal honest review. And it luckily coincided that I did really enjoy this book. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't have agreed to it if I didn't think I would enjoy this book. But I just saw the topic and the subject and I thought, oh my god, that's so me. And it was, in general, very, very me so i would overall recommend this book and let me know in the comments what you guys think but obviously this is just the release date so i don't expect any of you to have read it enough to, to say oh i disagree with you here or oh i agree with you here but do let me know if it caught your eye oh yeah and also in my new dorm you can hear every slam of every door so I hope that I'm not shouting too loudly when I'm reviewing this book. But either way, I think the world deserves to hear it. So yeah, the Dictionary People is out today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.